Hello, Hardys all over the world. Come on in. You know the drill at this point. We're doing yet another virtual live event celebrating season eight of When Calls the Heart. You know me, I'm Deidre Behar. And today I am one lucky girl because it is Ladies' Day. I am joined by some of our favorite gals from Hope Valley. Please help me welcome Johanna Newmarch, Eva Bourne, Kayla Wallace, Andrea Brooks, and our new queen, Natasha Burnett. Hi, guys. Hi. How's everyone doing? You all look beautiful. Hi. Oh, thank you. Doing well. Yay. It is, you know, it's we're still virtual, we're still at home, but we are still so passionate and we're so invested in everything going on in Hope Valley. I want to get right into it. Um, of course, up, uh, coming up on Sunday, we're going into episode four of When Calls the Heart. And I'm really, really excited because Natasha, we're going to be meeting your character, Minnie. So if you could just tell me a little bit about Minnie, what we can expect, and, and what has your experience on When Calls the Heart been like so far? Well, Minnie is this really strong, she's intelligent, uh, she's such a caring woman, mm -hmm. and uh, she comes in, but and she really has her, her, her own way of doing things, and it's such a nice sort of dynamic that she, she brings, I think, to the show, and a different dynamic as well which is really nice and it was just fun to play something um, from that time period. And uh, being on set was great because uh, I already knew Johanna and Andrea. I'd worked with both of them before, so it was really nice to sort of see faces that I knew. Um, I hadn't known Viv before, uh, but we got along really, really well. So it just felt like we knew each other the whole time. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's so awesome that everybody on When Calls the Heart brings something unique and different to the table. Every character really shines in their own way. What are you most excited for fans to really uh, learn from, from Minnie or take away from what she brings to the town? She, I feel like she's such a well-rounded character that it would be so nice if the fans could really just see all her different levels and just know that in all of that she just means well and she has so much love for her family and she's just it's a very difficult situation for her to be in a new town uh, with her kids and her husband isn't as cautious as she is so you know <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of fans will understand and just understand her journey as she sort of goes back and forth between feeling comfortable there and then unsure again. So, yeah. Well, I have a feeling she's going to tug at our heartstrings in the absolute best way. Uh, I, I think fans can't help but notice. I believe you have a British accent. Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> How is it doing your accent on the show? Do you stay in um, in mini mode all day? Do you go back and forth? Uh, I don't stay in mini mode all day. I do go back and forth because funnily enough, I find because of the time period, the language was a lot like the British English back in that time as well and that we use now. So there are a lot of more similarities. So it's actually almost in certain respects easier to, to fall into the accent. Okay, I was gonna say, are there any tips or tricks for you to kind of quickly switch that on? But it sounds like it's pretty natural for you. Yeah, kind of, it's just like the minute they say action, I turn into mini. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, I know we're all so excited to meet Minnie and the rest of the Canfield family on Sunday. Um, I know it's going to be an episode, like all the rest, completely jam-packed with love and action and romance. Um, Eva, I want to go to you now. I would love to know a little bit about the journey that your character, Clara, is on. You know, they, we saw the classy wedding in season seven, and it was so beautiful. And now in season eight, it kind of feels like, you know, they're realizing that marriage isn't exactly a walk on easy street. What can you tell me about that? I think you're definitely right in that department. Um, they are learning as a young couple that it is 
very difficult being married, especially in your first year. Um, I mean, for them, this is the first time they're living together. So they're really intertwining their lives um, and getting to know one another on a completely different level. <laughs> um, and I think that Clara is now coming to this point in her life where she's surrounded by, you know, strong women and she's really taking on this sort of characteristic of them um, asking for what they want. And I think she's finding sort of the, well, in the uh, choppy waters of how to balance, you know, asking for what you want, but also trying to show your love as well for your partner. Um, but yes, Jesse and Clara have a far way to go in the ups and downs of this season. So. Uh, well you know, I think it's wonderful that you're showcasing a, a real marriage, that nothing is all sunshine and, and rainbows. Mm -hmm. uh, but but for you, who's, you know, I feel like you're probably used to, you know, seeing so much positivity between the two of them. They've really been each other's rocks to pivot and now have a little bit of friction between the two. I mean, how have you reacted to that as an actress, you know, reading the scripts and seeing where this story arc has gone? Um. You know, it's funny because Aaron and I have talked about it a lot um, when we got the first scripts and we were excited. It's something fun for us to play and, um, you know, for us to be able to really develop this strong relationship for these two characters who um, are always changing. They're growing. They're, you know, they came together as um, young uh, adults and now they're, you know, in their mid 20s <laughs> wherever we are now yeah and um they're growing together but they're also realizing that um to grow together they have to have their separate lives as well so it's definitely an interesting stage but Aaron and I were really excited about having some real friction and conflict in um their relationship yeah well I know um from what Aaron has told us in the past Jesse might be reverting to uh some of his like former bad boy ways how is Clara feeling about that? Not so good. Not so good. <laughs> um, but luckily, I think in this season especially, you see the friendships and the, the bonds that she's creating with these other women. Um, with Fiona and those and scenes me. have been so fun to watch, I just have to say. They were so fun to film. <laughs> like, my favorites, probably. Oh. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, yeah, so I think she's definitely not enjoying this sort of uh, reverting back into his old bad boy days. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, she's she is Clara. She is herself first and foremost, but she's also now a wife. And so she's learning how to take on um, the responsibility of guiding him as well. Uh, so I think that she does a good job in the rest of the season being able to kind of get him back on track but i think i mean i could be wrong i'm not married in real life but i think there's always sort of an aspect of um when you combine lives with someone else still trying to hold on to yourself as an individual and who you are and i think that's maybe what jesse is experiencing a little bit absolutely and uh and i know we'll stay tuned i can't wait to see how all of their uh, relationship woes unfold. But my last question for you, Eva, um, I know every couple has their own journey. I respect it. You, you move at your own pace, but do you think there's any baby fever going on between Claire and Chris? <laughs> um, <laughs> that's a great question. <laughs> I think that, I'm gonna say not right now. I think that um, they have a little bit of a ways to go. I think I think both of them are eager to have a family one day, but uh, I I see I see a couple more things coming down the line before a baby. <laughs> okay, okay, we'll, we'll pump the brakes on that for now and let them enjoy newlywed life. Uh, hi, Andrea. Hi. How are you? It's so nice to see you. It's so nice to see you. Well, I have really, really enjoyed watching. Uh, nurse faith turn doctor faith and really step into these um doctor shoes and she's really owning it and seems to be having a lot of fun but you know it's not without a little bit of conflict as we saw in episode three there was a really empowering moment between your character and paul green's character of course carson 
um, where Faith is like, I am demanding 50-50 uh, power in this in this infirmary, very mm -hmm. rightfully so. Where is the Faith and Carson narrative going to go as they um, navigate both being doctors now? That is such a good question. Uh, first of all, it was the most exciting thing to re-enter Hope Valley wearing pants. Oh, uh, yes. Come, coming in with the horses on the buckboard. Uh, and I have to thank uh, Mr. Tinker for that because um, it was just such a strong, empowering way to start off the season for Faith's arc. Um, but with that, uh, we have to pay attention to the fact that Faith has been in Chicago. She has been presumably surrounded by all men while she was studying medicine over there and finishing up her degree. And she would have had to assert herself in a way that she probably hadn't done before. So coming back to Hope Valley with all of this energy, all of this enthusiasm was so exciting to play. But with that, of course, comes a little bit of friction. Um, so, and Paul and I have been working at this for so long now, and we know each other so well as actors. And it was really fun to get to play out friction in a way that we hadn't necessarily had the chance to do before. Um, and of course, then you have some empowering moments as a result of that. Uh, Faith really proving herself. She's really standing on her own two feet this season. And she's kind of saying, look, I chased my dream. I studied. Um, I have a wealth of knowledge behind me and I want to practice. I want to I want to be myself, and that causes a little bit of turmoil in, in you know, their own way. So getting to play that has been empowering, exciting, and very interesting uh, from an actor standpoint, because it's a little bit different from what we've explored in the past between Faith and Carson. Well, you, you have me hooked. I have been watching, you know, uh, like everybody else, like all the Hardys in the world, you know, watching the nurse, Faith, sorry, now Dr. Faith, um, <laughs> yeah. trajectory and, 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 and her relationship blossom with Carson. And I have to tell you, you just gave a nod to the pants. I do want to ask you about the pants in a second. <laughs> but in, in the season premiere, watching Carson serenade Faith by the water, what a picturesque and romantic moment. Um, yeah. First of all, can you tease if there's going to be any more music in, in season eight of When Calls the Heart? And also, like, what was it like filming that scene? Paul strumming his guitar there for you. Oh, I mean, what a picturesque setting. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever actually filmed in that exact location until this season. And it's beautiful. You look around, there were frogs jumping in the water and you have all the tall grass and it was just be shot on such a beautiful day. And then you have Paul there saying, I wrote a song for you. I mean, it was so much fun. Um, and can I tease more music? I don't know that I can tease more music per se but Paul and I uh do you know sing behind the scenes a lot in between setups he always has a guitar with him so uh it was kind of a fun little nod to what he likes to do in his real life uh, and we kind of got to bring that to the screen screen this season so that was really exciting that, that was such a treat for us hardies um <laughs> and, you know, kind of building off those romantic moments where we see Faith and Carson really prioritizing their relationship Again, I'm going to say it again. I respect every couple. You move at whatever pace you're comfortable with. But is there a possibility that we could see Carson put a ring on it this season? I mean, anything is possible. <laughs> anything is possible. Um, but I will say that it has been quite exciting to figure out some new dynamics between Faith and Carson because Faith has grown up a lot. You know, mm -hmm. she went off, she finished her medical degree and she's she's back and I kind of think of her as a full adult now. She is who she's always desired to be and she chased her, dr she chased her dream. Um, and so we have to kind of reestablish our connection. I think that's only natural and I'm really thankful to John Tinker for allowing us as characters to figure out these dynamics. Um, you know, it's not always peaches and cream. Sometimes you have to sit down and have the hard conversations and figure out where you stand. And I think we had a lot of fun figuring out and playing out all those beats this year. Wonderful. Well, from one couple that we have seen for a minute in Hope Valley to Johanna, I want to move to you. And I hope that we've got what could be a new romance blossoming in Hope Valley. It has been so fun, Johanna, to see you opposite Jack Wagner, of course, 
Judge Bill Avery, um, the, the romantic tension and the sparks, to me, they seem to be there. What can you tease about this potential new couple? Well, it is such a fun cat and mouse game uh, so far, uh, and uh, that continues on. So there's just so much room for playfulness and, as I say, you know, little, you know, sort of strategic moments between the two of us seeing, feeling each other out. And uh, it's, it's very playful and it's really fun. Um, and working with Jack is delightful. Um, yeah, I, I'm just really excited for the fans to be able to enjoy this little uh, flirtation that we're on. Well, the chemistry between you and Jack is so great. I feel like you guys have really mastered like such a great push and pull where I think I think uh, Molly has the upper hand and and, and uh, Judge Bill Avery is kind of like, wait, what's going on? And then it, it flips. So I I'm just curious mm -hmm. for, you, for you as an actress, someone objective who enjoys the show, do you think they make a good match? Do you think that they should be a couple? I think that Molly's sort of sweet, fun, sassiness and also her heart is a really nice counterpoint to his sort of dry, gruff, uh, you know, sense, you know, sensibilities. Um, I mean, obviously Bill cares very much. We all know that he's had lots of examples of showing his tender heart, you know, particularly in uh, Eva's wedding episode that was very touching. Um, yeah. You know, so he's a deep well, but you know, the way he presents, uh, you know, on the more on a su surface level is, is a fun counterpoint to Molly's sort of, you know, feisty, playful, humorous, uh, warm. I think they. I think opposites attract, and I think that uh, they're a great example of that. Totally. I wanna. I wanna ask the other ladies on the panel here. You know, it, I have been rooting for Bill to find a little romantic uh, action in his life over the past few seasons. Do you guys ship Bill and Molly as a couple together? One hundred percent. Yeah. Oh, yay. Yeah. Great. Have you, uh, Johanna? Have you thought about what their couple's name would be? Oh, <laughs> I'm going to actually put out a, uh, a little, uh, yeah, a little, uh, a poll on that oh. one. Um, yep. Yep. And, uh, okay. I, th and I think so far the one that rolls up the tongue is Moby. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to let I the fans. say mobile. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, let's not go with mobile. No. Yeah. I think that might be a toy company already. I think we should, <laughs> um, I'll let, I'll let the fans help me with that one. It's, it's not terribly obvious, but yeah. Okay. So verdict is still out on what their couple's name would be, but you know, we already, we ship Flomo in so many different ways. Aww. We love these two Queens together and their friendship and, and the special moments. You know, the fans always really look forward to them. Can you tease? Thank you one flow-mo moment that is not to be missed this season. Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, without giving too much away, uh, Florence has a really beautiful arc this season and you get to see Molly. Molly's always been 100% uh, supportive of her wonderful friend Florence, but you get to see that deepen in such a beautiful way. And there's, there's a couple scenes where just their friendship and their commitment to each other as humans and as women uh, are it's just so touching. Uh, we, we, I, I can't say too much more than that, but I, I'm just 1000% there for Florence and I really help her uh, when she needs it most and really come through for her. And we have a scene of, of, of us being able to express our appreciation for each other that uh, was extremely touching for me to have to film. Uh, and it was actually quite sweet because the director kept saying, you guys, you need to cry a little bit less, cry a little bit less. Cause like, <laughs> Because we've been on this journey together, Loretta and I, for for eight years, you know, and 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 so much of our natural love and affection for each other just came pouring out. We had to like, try to like keep our keep ourselves a little bit more in check emotionally. It was really wow. really touching. It was you know, personally touching, and then uh, touching very much as the characters. So, yeah. Well, I love how on one calls the heart. Some of these moments like tend to like bleed over into real life. I was talking to to Viv, um, Natasha's of course on screen counterpart. And he said that working with his kids on screen, it doesn't even feel like acting. He's just a proud parent in those moments. And for you, Johanna, to have you know your friend Loretta there after all these years, and, and you guys are especially right now in Women's Empowerment Month, um, I, I just think the work that you guys are doing is so powerful and very moving. Oh, thank you so much. That really means just a huge amount to me. And, and much like Viv, there's no acting required. I just, I adore the women I work with and I hope that that uh, comes across on screen, so. Oh, it really does. And my last question for you, Johanna, the yes. fans online are really talented and dedicated with their Flomo artwork, their Flomo edits. Do you right? see these? What is your reaction to that? Oh, I'm I'm always just gobsmacked. I, I, I just go, what? what? How? <laughs> 
how is somebody this talented? How is somebody this creative, this playful, this fun? It's just brought me so much joy all through this journey, but particularly this year, you know, we're all dealing with the, the very many challenges uh, before us. So their, their enthusiasm and their affection and their, as I say, their creativity has just been, it touches my heart so deeply. We've, I've never experienced a fan base like this. I don't think, I think as all of us have. Uh, and just the, the kindness and love and genuine affection that the, the fans have for these characters is, is, is an, an, an endless source of genuine uh, joy for me. So, yeah, thank you, fans. Thank you. Yes. Well, I, I hope, I believe all these these women would gladly agree with you on that one. Yeah. Uh, Kayla, speaking of women's empowerment, <laughs> it's so nice to see you. You are a woman that I truly adore and admire. Um, very similar to your character on One Calls the Heart. You know, watching Fiona... Um, really redefine what it means to be a woman during that time period has been so inspiring and so empowering to watch. So for you, first of all, I just want to know what can you tease for the rest of Fiona as she continues on this journey? Yeah, well, so far, I think we've seen her push more boundaries like she like she always sort of has push them with her work moves and and social norms of that time. Um, you might see her get a little closer with some cast members and um, maybe I'll just say that. <laughs> Whoever could it be? Uh, well, I, I think <laughs> she's a very friendly person and she, she might make a friend, an even better friend. So we'll, you guys will get to see a fun journey there. Okay, uh, I will. I will come back to that in a second. Okay. Um, I, I just want to ask you because we we just watched Fiona in episode three. Um, really step up to the plate, and she doesn't hear man. You know, Belle says to her, "We'll call if we need more men out there." She completely bypasses that, and she goes down to uh you know not the scene of the crime but you know what would you call it like where the explosion occurred yeah and and she is not afraid to roll up her sleeves and get dirty and and help and um what has it been like for you watching your character grow and blossom in this way has it been empowering um ha have, has it been a delight for you to to really watch fiona grow this season it yeah it really has i i loved that she got to struggle a little bit at the beginning when, you know, business was at first, you know, she, she couldn't get anyone in her shop. She was like, who wants a, their first haircut? And everyone ran away. And then, um, you know, the cutting of the ear, like I, I loved that she all of a sudden wasn't, cause she's sort of been good at what she does and gets the jobs done. So it's been fun to see her struggle a little bit, but then also pull through and that the scene where she where she jumps in and helps and yeah doesn't hear the word man and doesn't care i that was a really cool scene for me to film it was honestly like as as a woman coming in and filming a scene with like seven guys it was it was new for me because and and i felt what that would have felt like for her you know that there would have been an intimidating factor there, but she stepped up and yeah, that was a really fun scene to film. Yeah, she's she's doing it, Fiona, and she doesn't make any apologies about it, which is why I love her so much. Uh, I'm gonna circle back to the little romance that you teased. Uh, fans can't help but you know celebrate. I, I have been loving seeing so many scenes between Fiona and who I call Hickam, but I've noticed that Fiona calls him Michael. And I feel like that little nuance there could possibly mean that there's there's some you know maybe flirtation going on or a possible romance in the works what do you think of that do you think they would be a good couple i really i really do i kayla really think that they <laughs> would make a they they're just so they're so opposite they're opposite sides of the confidence spectrum i would say like hickam is so sweet and so um but he's very smart, and I think that that's something that really connects them. Um, and also that he's he's just the sweetest in real life and in the show. Uh, mm -hmm. But I love that he's this sort of timid little mouse, and she's this, you know, confident woman. And mm -hmm. 
they have a really fun dynamic and you guys yeah you people will get to see them in a few more scenes this season so stay tuned okay another romance i'm absolutely rooting for what would fiona <laughs> and Hickam be what would their couple's name be Ooh, we need to start a, a poll on that one too yeah launch your poll on your instagram story i love it <laughs> um, yeah I, I can't have you wonderful ladies uh, here with me today and not ask this question. And I'm going to preface it by saying, I think inherently all of us are team Elizabeth, right? We just want to see Elizabeth happy. We want to see her and her son happy together, find companionship and loyalty in a partner, whoever it may be. But with that said, as it stands today, Natasha, I'll start with you. Do you feel like your team Nathan or Team Lucas? Can I be Team Luthen? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, say that one more time. Team Luthen. <laughs> and why do you feel that way? Tell me. <laughs> no, um, let me see. I'm gonna say, you know what? I'm, I feel like I want to say Nathan because I know what happened to Jack, but you know, she should just get out there and <laughs> let all of that go and give it another go with a Mountie. Okay, I like the confidence in your response. That's wonderful. Andrea, how are you feeling? I have such a hard time with this question. I adore both characters. I adore both actors. Um, and I flip flop. so I'll do one interview, I'll say Nathan. One interview, I'll say Lucas. Um, it's just so impossible, but I want to give an answer. So I'm thinking back to the end of episode two mm -hmm. and that final scene, that oh. the, that heart crushing moment, that was pretty awesome. So I'm going to say to Nathan because I, I'm still thinking about that scene. Okay, we've got two votes for Nathan. Kayla, how do you stand? After this episode that we've just been talking about, mm -hmm. I'm going to say Team Lucas. Ooh. Okay, tell me why. I think there's a there's a quality to him that's new and that sparks something in Elizabeth that's exciting. Okay. But I if if I was to step back an episode, what Andrea was just saying, I'm 100% <laughs> Team Nathan. <laughs> it's hard. It really does vacillate episode to episode, mm -hmm. right? It does, mm -hmm. and it will. It will keep doing. <laughs> I believe Kevin McGarry teased it as there are more red herrings in season eight than a zoo. <laughs> Not sure if red herring is even an animal, but I like the quote. <laughs> okay, so we've got one vote for Lucas, two votes for Nathan. Eva, where do you stand? Okay, well, I'm going to have to just even the score and say <laughs> Lucas. <laughs> no, and you don't even need to have yeah. it. I want honesty. Honesty, please. Um, I, I think... Like everyone's saying, I go back and forth constantly, um, especially this season, just reading episode to episode. Mm -hmm. And uh, but, but I'm going to say Lucas because I've always loved that they have this um, bond over storytelling and novels and um, reading. And that's obviously something that's so influential and and intrinsically Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. So I love that um, Lucas is able to bring that even more out in her and support her in that. Um, so I, I say Lucas. All right, Johanna, pressure's on. We've got two. Oh, this is totally unfair. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. This is not just because I'm the tiebreaker, but I have struggled with this, th this triangle for so long because as the ladies have said, that both the characters are so compelling. Uh, as humans, as actors, uh, you know, let's be honest, they're both, you know, very easy on the eyes. Um, and I think that it's a testament to John Tinker's writing that what we're talking about the season is that from episode to episode that we feel strongly one character and then we feel strongly another character because he's written such compelling storylines uh, and reasons for her her, uh, you know, her, her heart being so torn. And as a woman and as a viewer, I so feel that. I go... Oh, this is so agonizing because they're both so special and so, you know, compelling on so many levels. How does one choose? How does one choose? 
And so I hate to say this, and it, it only gets worse because I know how this season goes. And there's certain things that are revealed about both characters that make you love them even more. Um, <laughs> so this is terrible. It's horrible. I, I honestly cannot choose. I mean, as a woman of a certain age, I will definitely say that Lucas's consistency is worth a lot, that you can take consistency to the bank in a long-term life partner, especially as a woman who is a child. She needs someone who's got her back consistently day in, day out, year in, year out. Um, but there's so many other wonderful qualities about Nathan. And also, I can't tease it, but there's a really big thing coming up this season where we understand so much more about his hesitation to declare his love for her, which he so boldly did last episode, which was so touching. I was extremely emotional after that episode. Um, so I think as a compassionate human, I know why about declaring his love. So it makes me... Uh, really empathic towards his characters, sort of what can seem like maybe lack of courage or vacillation. So I'm, I'm, ter I'm, hor I'm so sorry, ladies. I can't choose, oh. and I'm not just saying that. I can't, I can't, I can't. I love them both. Hi, Joanna. Jo <laughs> think, think about it like this: If Elizabeth was your best girlfriend and she came to you with this predicament and said, "I've got chocolate ice cream and vanilla ice cream and i love ice cream i love both of them so much which one has the 0. 0.0001 competitive advantage over the other okay because the other that... four ladies gave answers i i can't let you get off the hook <laughs> so mean so mean okay so i'm going to answer it based on where we are in the season right now okay so okay. coming up on episode four so yes. far i have to say that his consistency holds a lot of weight so i would say lucas based on where we are now but like all these ladies said, and all like fans out there, I that that feeling may change. Okay. Final score today. Three for Lucas, two for Nathan. And I, I know that obviously you ladies know uh where that journey ends by the end of this season. You know the decision that she makes. I'm hoping you can give me your best poker faces. No spoilers here. What can you tell me about the finale. How did you react when you read the script? What kind of emotions were running through you? How do you think fans are going to feel? Natasha, let's start with you. Um, do you know, the way that things came together in that final episode, it was just the perfect sort of moment to just realize in everyone's storylines, I think, that it was just a perfect symbol of Hope Valley at its best. I really felt like that. And it was it was such a happy moment just to see even for my story and Elizabeth's story and everyone's story, just to see where it ends. It's for now. It's just like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I think the fans will really enjoy it. I think whatever they thought about um Elizabeth, whether Luke or Nathan, I really think they'll they'll get to the end and still have love for the the other party that may have won her heart. <laughs> Andrea, what was going through your mind when you read the script? <laughs> I have never in my life torn through a script so fast. <laughs> um, I, I, I And I didn't skip because I, I, I wanted to make sure I got everything. And I just, it just, just the feelings, the feelings. They're, they're lovely. It's perfect. It's a great resolution. You'll see. Um, it was wonderful. <laughs> Uh, Kayla, were you as voraciously reading through the script? How did you feel oh, yeah. about the, the decision <laughs> at the end? I, going back to what Natasha said, I really think that this season you got to see so much of both characters that it it's like there was no unanswered questions. It felt very... Um, serene? I don't know. Is that a weird... Like, we've... we've, oh. we've it made sense, and um, yeah, I mean, in in re reality, half the people are gonna be upset, but I think it leaves, you know, it's exciting to see where that person will go next, too. So it's, it, like, what a tough decision, oh my goodness. Yeah. I, I'm happy Fiona doesn't have to make that decision. <laughs> We don't and have to make that decision. I think if you're a true hearty, if you're a true one calls the heart fan, you have Elizabeth's best interest at heart. Mm -hmm. So I hope there's no upset fans. You know, it's like, again, it's the difference between your two favorite flavors of ice cream. You're still getting ice cream at the end of the day. And if your friend is happy, 
everybody will be happy. And Aaron Krako has confirmed that neither suitor is leaving the show. So hopefully we'll continue to see both gentlemen's journeys, regardless of, of what the decision is. Eva, I want to ask you, is it hard for you to hold on to this secret? Do fans approach you, tweet you, ask you? Uh, and what's your reaction when people are um, like, I want answers? <laughs> yes. Oh, well, it's funny. I've actually become quite close with um, one fan. And uh, she asks me <laughs> all the time, like whenever an episode ends, she's like, I noticed that, you know, some people were reacting this way to Lucas or to, to Nathan. <laughs> I know you can't tell me anything, but I'm just wondering what you think. <laughs> um, but I think like everyone else, uh, I I remember actually that day, I think we were on set filming another episode and we'd gotten those scripts at lunchtime. So everybody just ripped through them and then came back to the green room and were like, did you read it? <laughs> 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 totally. Um, it was on set that day, I imagine. Yeah. So... I think that, um, and I think as you're saying too, you know, a true hearty um, is going to want what's best for everyone. And even, you know, whoever lose out, loses out on Elizabeth is still going to gain in life in some way. And they're going to find love in Hope Valley. Um, so I think, yeah, a true fan is just going to want what's best for everyone. Um, but yes, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah. And, and Johanna, closing words on this hot topic that fans love to talk about? Oh, goodness. Well, yeah, the final episode. I mean, as Eva said, it was released on a day that most of us were there. And I think I was in the middle of shooting a scene. So I got to it a, like an hour later. And I was, I, I remember so clearly we were, I was sitting in the green, what they, you know, the, they made Abigail's into a green room for us. We we're all sort of in holding, as it's called. And uh, uh, I remember Aaron Krako and, um, and, uh, Lucas, sorry, we're, Chris McNally, were huddled in the corner discussing something very important. And I was sitting in my in my chair, you know, flipping through it, reading graciously like a crazy person because it was I was like sweating and like my heart was racing as I was reading this episode. And then the end of it, I yelled, I I finished it and I was like, "Holy Hannah!" And they all looked at me and they're like, and I was like, "Oh, sorry, just finished the episode, guys." And they're like, "Right?" I was like, "Yeah." It's it was just so as as these ladies say, it was. Everything was summed up in a way that felt right. It felt good. It felt it, like it had integrity and elegance. And I just thought it was a really exciting way to end season eight because I feel that it leads such a beautiful opportunity into season nine. Oh, gosh. So. And let's keep our fingers crossed. You know me. I have been rallying. I want One Calls the Heart season 75. I'm hoping <laughs> that you ladies are committed for the long haul. Because really, okay. you know, we're we're talking about the love triangle here, and I'm I'm obviously very invested in that. But the show, I think, is so magical because it's it's an ensemble. It's about a community. It's about multiple people on their different wavelengths and their different journeys in life. And you all shine your magic on that, and and you teach us lessons, and you keep us wanting more. So mm -hmm. I am so excited to see how everything plays out. If you have a few more minutes, I'd love to play a quick women's empowerment themed game with you, ladies, if you're down. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. So in honor of March being Women's Empowerment Month, um, I just want to play a rapid fire game. I'm going to shoot you a quick question and I would love to know your, your first thing that pops to mind. Okay. So my first question, Natasha, let's start with you. Most inspiring woman in your life? Uh, my mother. Uh, is she, is she in the UK? Is she in Canada with you? She is in the UK at the moment. She's, uh, yeah, there's, she's recently told me stories about her life back when uh, when she was working and stuff and the things that she went through and it just really inspired me, really inspired me. Well, I know she is certainly proud of you and the incredible work that you do. Is she a hardy? Can we confirm that she is a hardy? She is. I do. <laughs> she does have a t-shirt. <laughs> love it uh andrea most inspiring woman in your life oh uh, i have to say the same my mom my mom's really been for the, me bleh. my mom has really been there for me uh especially over the past couple years i've had a baby i work a lot and uh she's just such a tremendous help and she's so wonderful and i, I see her in a whole new light after becoming a mom so 
Oh, and how is your little one doing? She's great. She's walking, talking, uh, bonking her head, running into walls. Uh, she's crazy and wonderful, and she's the best. <laughs> was was her first word hardy? Oh, I think her first word was ball, but we should have a talk about that. <laughs> Okay, good. I'm happy to hear that she's doing well. She's <laughs> such a little cutie, that one of yours. Yeah. Uh, Kayla, which woman in your life inspires you the most? I've got to say, I mean, I it's a tie between mom and sister. I, my sister is a mother of two tiny little ones, and I don't know how she does it. Um, she's a superstar. She's a rock star. And my mom, too. I hope I can be half the woman she is one day. Oh, you already are. I know you are. You're a superstar. Eva? Um, I think I have to say my grandmother. Um, she's passed away now, but I was very close with her um, all throughout her life. And she was someone who, you know, she grew up in the 20s, the 30s, 40s, and she was a trailblazer of her time. Um, for what she was teaching me and, you know, her experiences at that time of being a woman. Mm -hmm. um, she, you know, taught me how to take care of my skin, which is something I'm obsessed with as well. <laughs> well, your skin is um, gorgeous and glowing. So she um, did something right there. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So I would have to say my grandmother, just a total trailblazer. And by the way, can you share what the like ultimate skincare tip is? <laughs> um, oh my gosh. Well, I feel like there are so many, but probably I would say, okay, two things. <laughs> um, I would say double cleansing, AM, PM. Oh, actually, no, PM only. And then um, AM, just wash with water, take it easy on your skin. And then I would say sunscreen, protect your skin from the sun. I love it. I'm going to go because I'm just a nighttime washer, like, yeah. you know, and I know so I, I, I love hearing why, what people do to get their gorgeous glow. And you always look so stunning. So oh, thank you. We, thank, we thank your grandmother for the wisdom. <laughs> thank you for telling us. <laughs> and, and Johanna, who inspires you the most? Uh, yes, it would be a split between my mother and my daughter. Um, so yeah, my mother's just an extraordinary woman. Uh, I'm, I'm her only child and we're incredibly close. Uh, and you know, I don't want to take up too much time. It would, I could spend a year talking about <laughs> her, but she's just one of those fearless people who has done extraordinary things with her life and never, ever, ever took no for an answer. If she, anytime she put her mind to something, she did it, uh, without getting into the details, she just pulled off extraordinary feats, uh, professionally and personally in her life. She would just point over the fence and say, there, I'm going there. And everybody would go, what are you talking about? And she would, sure enough, she'd go do it. And she'd do it with finesse and style. And uh, she's just an extraordinary human. Uh, she's the strongest, most feisty, powerful. She's a very powerful woman. Nobody messes with my mom. Uh, and she really taught me that. She t absolutely taught me her your worth and that people will treat you like you, like you let them treat you. So that's huge. Um, and then my daughter, who's uh, 22, going to be 23, She's just, I've been really inspired by how she's handled the challenges of this uh, last year, uh, you know, without talking too much about the tedium of, of, of the, you know, work of COVID. Um, she, you know, she had to, she was wrapping up her, her degree at the University of Edinburgh amidst very challenging times. And she had to, you know, finish her dissertation in quarantine. And she still managed to get a first, which was the, uh, for those of you, that's a British term, like the highest uh, honor you can get uh, for your degree. And wow. it's a very prestigious school. And so I was just really proud of her tenacity because, you know, we all had some difficult days, but she pushed through it and she just kept saying, I can do this, I can do this. And then, you know, the challenges of anybody trying to launch their career in this un uncertain year, uh, you know, it's there's not a lot of opportunities. And so trying to keep your spirits up and, you're, and staying hopeful about the future. And I've just been really uh, inspired by her strength. Uh, it made me just really proud of her. I'm going to start crying, so I'm going to stop there. <laughs> uh, well, I, 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 she sounds like a really, really special young lady and I, I know that a lot of that is a result of how incredible you are and I'm sure the, the values that you've instilled in her. Thank my you. last question my last question in this game. I'm I'm fascinated by the idea of like in another universe doing character swaps. So Natasha, I'm gonna start with you. If you could play a different character on When Calls the Heart, who would you want to play and why? <laughs> I the first name that came into my head was Hicken. He's so fun and entertaining. I was just like, it would be 
so great to just do such a comedic role. It would just be fun. So fun. <laughs> but then, Natasha, you would never get a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> never. <laughs> Okay, that's a great answer, Natasha. Andrea, who would you want to swap with? Oh, I'll say Rosemary. She's so grand and fabulous and big, and I love her outfits, and I think that would be a lot of fun. Very different, opposite of Faith. Uh, so, yeah, the other extreme. I think that'd be well, fun. You, you and Paul Green really are, uh, you know, two of a kind because that was the exact answer that he gave to this no question. it wasn't well, yes it was. <laughs> of course <laughs> okay hickam rosemary kayla who would you want to trade shoes with okay i would want to ride a horse so Ooh. i'm gonna say nathan and i could put i could wear a red surge yeah, yeah. oh my gosh the first the first female cop of that era yeah. You know I stand it. You know I worship that. I love that. Uh, Fiona breaking barriers yet again. I hope John Tinker watches this. That would be a really <laughs> interesting idea. Totally. Okay, Eva. Um. Okay, I'm gonna say because I've really enjoyed the storyline, especially this uh, season so far, for Faith. And also, oh, mostly, I want that pantsuit. So. <laughs> <laughs> Andrea, I didn't have a chance to ask you about that just really quickly. The idea of putting Faith in pants, was that your idea? Was that your brainchild? You know what? When John Tinker met with each and every one of us before we started the season, and he sat down with me, and the first thing he said, he's like, next season, Faith comes back to town, pants. And I was just like, <laughs> I love it. I love it. And then we proceeded to have the most amazing meeting ever. Um, and so after that meeting, I did my research. I went through the history books. I found some amazing uh, photographs that I've, I've posted on my story on Instagram. And women did wear pants. It was rare, but they did, especially in the big cities. So that was kind of a fun thing that she brought back with her from Chicago. Well, she looks stylish. And I love that it's, it's empowering and, and something new. So I'm all for it. Um, okay, cool. Johanna, we're going to wrap up with you. Who would you like to trade characters with for a day? Honestly, right now, I'm, I'm obsessed with Minnie, and I would love to yeah. be Minnie. Yeah. Uh, I just think she's, uh, John Tinker's written a really complex, really interesting character, uh, and I'm very touched by her advocacy uh, for her children um, and her relationship with Viv. I mean, I'm a huge fan of Viv as a human being. He's just a a beautiful man uh and i just love their relationship i love the depth of their relationship um, and i'm just yeah i'm just really excited about the quiet unwavering conviction uh you know in her in what she believes in for her family uh, and also you know i i'm sure uh, i i think it's always great to change you know change shoes with someone who uh sees the world for, you know from a different uh you know point of view you know so yeah natasha how do you feel about doing a little switcheroo with molly you know what? Why ever not? Let me do this. No problem. I'll hang out with Bill. Try and flirt with him a little bit. You know? I love that. Beautifully put. You women are truly terrific. I'm just going to end this today by kind of giving you the floor. Um, you know, it's been a challenging year, and When Calls the Heart certainly has provided a lot of joy, a lot of uh, love and laughter and comfort to viewers like me at home. Uh, what what do the Hardys mean to you? What do the messages that you receive mean to you? And, and what does the support mean to you? Oh, it means the world. Uh, it's just so wonderful to be a part of. Uh, one thing I admire about this fandom is the positivity. Um, mm -hmm. Even if something negative is said at some point, the, the positivity far outweighs it. And we're just so lucky um, to have such amazing advocates for our show. Totally. We have so many, so many amazing people rooting for us and mm -hmm. it's just so great to be supported by such a large group of people honestly it's it's amazing like we thank all of you guys for keeping us mm -hmm. employed yes <laughs> and, and on top of that too like it was so lovely to to work with all of these ladies and work with the cast that we have mm -hmm. you know this year it's it's such an awesome community within the show and then the Hardys is a whole nother level of community that we so, so, so appreciate. Yeah. 
Yes. Yeah, and I just, I just love that I feel like our I guess everybody in their life wants to make wants to feel like what they do makes a difference in the world. Um, you know, because I remember at different points in my career going, does, does what I do really matter? Does anybody care? And then really feeling with this show like I make a difference in people's lives, that I lift people's spirits, um, you know, help them get through tough times. Those are the messages that really touch me the most. You know, when you're, you'll get a message from someone who's in hospital getting treatment and they're just talking about how much their show has helped uh, get, our show has helped them get through tough times. Those are the messages that really stick with me and, and really, uh, you know, give me the, you know, when you're having a challenging week, it just gives you the, the, the motivation to just keep keep pushing through all the trials and tribulations of being an actor, because there are many of them. I mean, just trying to still create shows that make a difference to people. So the, the, the fans are, they're just huge. They're, they're very, very meaningful to all of us. We talk about it regularly on set. So thank you all. <laughs> Natasha, being new to the Hardy community, what has that been like for you so far? It definitely was an eye opener because Andrea, I've spoken to Andrea about this beforehand, and I, you know, I was listening, Andrea. It's just when it actually is happening, <laughs> it's a completely different moment. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Natasha <laughs> and I, we share a manager, uh, and so I think I, and we've hung out many a time over the year, uh, over the years, and yeah, I, I, I know it's something we had spoken about, and when you joined, I was like, yes, this is so perfect. I love how dedicated they are to us and to each other. Sometimes I'd see a tweet where one hearty isn't feeling good that day mm. and they would get multiple messages from other hearties just really supporting them. Mm -hmm. So it's really yeah. something to experience. Mm -hmm. Eva, yeah, I'll let you close us out, Queen. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say too, I mean, with now over eight seasons, you know, I think the Hardys have um, seen us have had some losses in regards to characters and for them to continue to rally behind us and for us to allow or for them to allow us to continue to tell stories. Um, they're everything. They're just everything. We're so grateful for them. That is beautifully put. It is so wonderful to see all five of your faces. You're doing incredible work on When Calls the Heart. I encourage everybody who is watching us right now to tune in for episode four of When Calls the Heart this Sunday, 9 p.m. on Hallmark Channel. I certainly will be tweeting along using the hashtag Hardies, and I hope to see all of the Hardies on Twitter blowing it up. Let's get it trending another week, shall we? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again, ladies. Wonderful to see you. You too. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.